All right, welcome to the Lawyer Henderson Show, Lawyer Henderson TV. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page. And also, don't forget to send us any type of contributions to our channels. I have my cash app um, information in this YouTube description if you would like to donate. And also, you can send a check to my P.O. Box to keep our channel going, to keep us in the loop. Well, we've got another case out here. Uh, this time it's going to be about a black woman who has been murdered by the Louisville Police Department. And the family is now suing uh, for the 26-year-old EMT's death. Uh, they had served a no-not warrant on a house where they suspected two suspects were and now the family is suing the EMT. Let's go to the story here from CBS News. Brianna Taylor, 26-year-old EMT, was asleep in her Kentucky home just after midnight on March the 13th when police entered with a search warrant and a drug investigation and opened fire, killing her. Now, a lawsuit filed by Taylor's family accused the officers of wrongful death, excessive force, and gross negligence. Louisville Metro Police Department official says that officers engaged in the shooting after Taylor's boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, shot at them first. But the lawsuit alleges that the police did not identify themselves that Walker, a licensed gun owner, thought someone was breaking in. Neither Walker nor Taylor had a criminal history of the drugs of our violence, the suit says. Taylor has been working as a EMT at emergency rooms at two hospitals, helping with the coronavirus response, her family said. Brianna loved life and she loved to help people and she loved her family. She didn't deserve what they did to her. Tamika Palmer, her mother, told CBS News correspondent Jer Jerica Duncan. The lawsuit obtained by CBS's news said, LMPD officers Miles Cosgrove uh, and Brett Han Hankinson and Sergeant Jonathan Manley, who are named as defendants, arrived at the home in plain clothes in unmarked vehicles. According to the lawsuit, they had a knock and announce search warrant for Taylor's apartment and were looking for men who lived in a different part of the Louisville uh, who had uh, already been apprehended by LMPD the previous day. The search warrant obtained by CBS News named two men, Adrian Orlandos Walker and Jamar uh, Jamarcus Cordell Glover, and said they had been observing transporting packages suspected to be drugs from the address. The search warrant does not name Kenneth Walker. The family lawsuit alleges the officers then entered the Brianna's home without knocking and without announcing themselves as police officers. The defendants then proceeded to spray gunfires into the residence with a total disagree, uh, disregard for the value of human life. Brianna Taylor was struck eight times. The lawsuit state Walker and Taylor believed, it, believed the home had been broken into by criminals that they were in significant and immediate danger. Police, on the other hand, says the officers knocked on the door and announced themselves, and that when the officers forced entry, they were immediately met by gunfire. Madeline was shot in the leg, police said. Walker has been charged with first-degree assault and attempted murder of a police officer. Madeline, Cosgrove, and Hank uh, uh, Kassin have been placed on administrative re reassignment during an internal investigation. The public integrity and in, in investigation into this case remain ongoing. Therefore, it would be inappropriate for us to comment beyond what we already have said immediately following the incident, the LMPD said Monday in a statement to CBS affiliate WLKY. The three officers involved is Detective Brett Han Hankison, Detective Mile Cosgrove, and Sergeant Jonathan Manley. The lawsuit brings up Cosgrove and Han Hankison's history of the use of force as officers. Cosgrove, the lawsuit claims, shot a Louisville resident seven times in a different case, and Hankinson, Hankinson allegedly had dozens of situations where he has sent citizens to the hospital for injuries from being tased, pepper sprayed, and struck repeatedly in the nose and eyes. The family attorney, Ben Crump, who also represents the Ahmaud Aubrey, 
told CBS Morning that Walker and Taylor thought they were being burglarized. Does the Second Amendment not apply to African Americans, Crump said. This was completely unnecessarily and unjustifiably killing of innocent women. Louisville Mayor Grant Fisher said in a statement that he is awaiting the outcome of the LMPD investigation into the case. As always, my priority is the truth come out and for the justice to follow the path of truth, Fisher said. Governor Anthony Bashir said in a statement posted on Twitter Wednesday that reports about Taylor's death are troubling. Her family and the public and the public uh, are at large deserve full facts of her death. He said and called the state legal officials to review the findings of the police investigation to assure justice is done. Now, here's the thing, okay, about these killer, uh, these cops who kill, who like to kill black people. The problem that black people don't understand is that cops like to kill black people. They like to use, y'all Let's looked at that story where they were using, in one police department, they were using black men as targets, as shooting, uh, uh, you know, shooting targets on their, on their little gun, uh, and when, they, when they go to the gun range and shoot and stuff, they were using black men as targets in one police department, and that was troubling. But in essence, um, you know, white supremacists like to, they, they love it when a black person who is innocent is murdered. This society is racist. It feeds off of that. This racist society feeds off in black people and black men and women been gunned down and come to find out they're innocent. As we see here, that neither Breonna Taylor nor her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, have a criminal past. And yet, um, he's been, you know, arrested and charged for self, uh, you know, for attempted murder on these officers. And these officers have a history of violence. They have a history of shooting and killing. They have a history of assault and all kinds of things. And so uh, the judge had uh, told him that, you know, that he have a court date and, and he released him on bond. <laughs> uh, the judge said, you know, I looked at it, but uh, this is self-defense. Um I think his name is Judge Ula Stevens, I think it is. Um, he said, no, we're not going to hold this man. We're going to release him. He got a trial date. We're not going to hold him to his trial. He's going home. He he pleaded uh, in self-defense and sent them home. <laughs> you know, this they, they the state don't like this judge because this judge pretty much, you know, you know, apply the law fairly. See, they have a problem with black men applying the law. See, when the when a law only is, you know, is applied in our favor, the white supremacists hate that. They they don't like for the law to be applied fairly. Okay, when white men, when they shoot and kill people, oh, it's all kind of, well, we were just following the law and we were doing this, but it's also, we are, well, we can also find other things to charge and charge and charge and charge. See, that's, that's what happened when white men get murdered and killed. As you've seen, of course, or uh, as you've seen in the uh, Muhammad Noor case where he shot the... Um, the white woman who jumped all on his car and and he was fearing for his life and he shot and killed her. You see how the tables turned. They was trying to put all kinds of things on him. You see. So the white supremacists are very, very, very clever into how they rationalize their own op uh, oppression and racism. And black people like to play dumb, as I told you, about racism. They like to think that there is no racism, that racism only exists in a back, uh, back vacuum. And we've shown over and over again that racism and the murders and shooting and killing of black men and women has been embedded in the police society here. You know, Breonna Taylor, her boyfriend was, uh, you know, was shooting back. He thought it was a burglar coming in. And he was, you know... 
you know, thinking that, hey, let me protect my, my girlfriend here. So he was pretty much doing the thing that white people always say. Where are the N N P uh, N A R? I'm sorry, are they, uh, what you call them, the N R A? Where are they at? The N R A. They talk about the Second Amendment. They talk all the time about how you, we should have guns and all of this. But do you see them coming in defense of uh, Mr. Walker? No. They like to call us and talking about, hey, can you donate to the police uh, fraternally, fraternal union, or you don't uh, donate to this organization, that organization? Yeah, why? Do y'all want us to donate so y'all can keep killing us? But these white supremacists have a history of violence in their culture. These three white men have a history of violence in culture. Well, two of them, at least out of the three. The white supremacists have always been able to get into the police force where they are able to then murder and murder and murder and lynch black people. This is their part of their psyche. This is a part of who they are. We've seen these things over. This We've seen George Zimmerman. We've seen uh, the, the white guy who went out there and killed the black man for the... Uh, uh, for uh, f uh, having a fender blender, uh, fender bender, where he just pretty much had an accident with him, and he got out the car, and they used that, that all white explaining, "Oh, I fear for my life." This is all of this type of things that we see that these race soldiers are out doing, and apparently, you know, only giving these people seven, ten years in jail is not enough. When did we decide to give police officers and others 10, 15 years in prison, uh, maybe life in prison, really is what they need in order to show that there's fairness in this so-called justice system? That has not happened, you see. And so we continue to see corrupt police officers engage in the crime. And this is what, no, these were not two individuals who were, had a criminal history. Even though the white media was trying to find something, they were trying to find something on both of these people. And if they can't find something, they'll go to your family members. They'll try to find some type of association because, you, you see, because when you're black, you got to always engage in criminality. And so that means that the police were justifiably uh, right and shooting and killing you. You see, this is how the white supremacists in their press, they have society justify it. And for the past years or so, you had CNN and other white media outlets that were trying to find something on the history of both Ahmad and Breonna Taylor and her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker. They've been out here trying to, you know, to smear, have, have a smear campaign on victims of racism and white uh, supremacist gunmen and these ones who are race soldiers with badges, they've been trying to justify their murders and killings of black folks. This is how the white media does it. White explaining their murders of black people and trying to get away from, you know, of help being responsible for what they have done and the death that they have caused from innocent black people. Because they pretty much get off on making sure that innocent black, the, if, if the person is innocent, the white supremacists love innocent black people getting shot and killed. This is their part of their amusement. And as I told you in the other video, that's what they got off of during the time that they were lynching us. And so therefore, the black media, we're out here, we're covering the stories like it should be. Roly Poly Martin is not going to cover the story. The Black Enterprise, all them, they're, they're part of the old dead black media. And whereas the LGBT community and the gay community and all of them, they're not going to say anything about these racist police officers. Because remember, they're not about, you know, protecting black men and women. Uh, when white men do something, it's all about black men, black men, black men. You see, so if it's not Bill Cosby, it's not R. Kelly. Uh, it has to be somebody black in order for them to come out and talk and say something. The white supremacists understands that. They understand that they got, you know, lesbian, uh, you know, associations and the, the shape, 
buttered Twitter crowd. They understand they got leverage and help and association and some and certain types of relationship with them. They got that all in pack. They got all of that. And so some bad ones coming out there and say, well, you know, well, what, what, well, we going to stop black on black violence? What about black on black violence? Y'all not rallying and protesting to stop black on black violence? And this is idiot. This is stupidity of certain types of black women who try to rationalize these police killings of black men. Now that you have a black woman out here shot and killed, now what? Now what? And like I told you, the white supremacists love when an innocent black person, especially a black female, you see, and you got to understand that the killing and murder of our women and, and men have to be pretty much always brought up it reminds the white supremacists of what they're doing is you know because we're the only one who's been calling this out other races have been set behind closed doors they have not been saying anything they have not you know this black and brown so-called uh what you call it so-called alliance that they say we have where's uh the hispanics and the asians to help us in these type of crimes Again, uh, that police officers are engaging to it. They're set back saying nothing here, you see. So anyway, I wanted to just, you know, talk about uh, this unfortunate death. It was a, She was a beautiful woman who had lost her life for nothing because of these white thugs in uniforms. They decided that they're going to take, uh, you know, to abuse their law and abuse uh, their power. And that's what they're doing here. But anyway, leave your comments and don't forget to subscribe to our channel where we are always talking and bringing you all of the business, the news that you need in order to keep yourself safe. I'm Lawyer Henderson. I'm your brother. I'm your friend to the end. Thank you for listening to me. Bye.